Hey everybody, I've had a lot of uh, requests for this type of video. And the main goal here is pretty much how to break out of your own zone effectively with possession, uh, passing, shooting the puck up boards, saucer passes, or just entering the zone with possession uh, without passing, right? So I have like a handful of examples um, that are easily replicated that happen a lot throughout games. Um, but before we get into the examples, I did want to show out my breakout strategies. So I use three high and stay wide. Um, and I've always tried to avoid having uh, like a cluster of forwards in the defensive zone on the breakout. Um, and that's just because whenever you have to make a lot of short passes, you have a higher chance just to turn the puck over. Um, and then I also like my players on the boards. It's easier to move the puck up on the board, safer option instead of turning the puck over in the middle of the ice. So I'm going to get into the examples now. Um, but as always, uh, the link to my Discord channels in the description. So I post my updated strategies there. Thanks. So the first set of examples I'm actually going to do from the uh, center ice face-off. Uh, something happens at least three times a game, right? Likely like eight, eight times maybe, depending on how many goals are scored. Um, so three different ways to win the face-off and actually maintain possession, like what you should look for. Um, so this first one here, uh, simple straight back win, right? And the main read should be where the opponent, who he's controlling and what they're doing, right? So my first read, if I win the face-off straight back, is to look at my center. Um, if there's a lane for the pass, um, usually it's a safe option to gain a scoring chance, right? So that lane was there. Immediately cut right to the side, wait for your wingers that are streaking to have separation, and then you're able to hit them with a pass. And this works uh, a lot. I try to do this a lot throughout a game. Uh, this led to a goal. If we rewind here, once you're able to enter the zone, the same exact thing, it always works out like that if you're able to get that pass to the center from the opening face-off. Um, so I'll go on to the next example here. So same thing as the first one, right? Win the face-off straight back. Um, but if that center is covered, right? So looking here, uh, win the face-off straight back, there's kind of like some congestion right there. So it's good just to take your time, uh, skate backwards a little bit, wait for something to open up, right? So coming back here, that face-off's one, we have like multiple options. You can go back to the other defenseman, reset, uh, attack the other way, especially considering we have two forwards on the defensive team uh, that are on the left side, right? Um, but just by taking the time, the winger cuts through the middle, and I'm able to get that pass right there for that zone entry, right? So first option, right, that we went over was passing to the middle. The second option, if that's covered, take your time and just wait for something to open up. There's no need to force anything. Here we have another center ice face-off. Um, the last two we looked at was winning it straight back, but the tie-up is the other option, right? Um, so what I did here, and I'm gonna rewind it a little bit, or actually the clip plays over, right? Um, as soon as you win the face-off, if you hold in R2 or right trigger on Xbox and flick your right stick to the left or the right, um, you're able to take control of the player immediately once the puck's dropped, right? So you can see the icon over my player. I skate him to the center. I'm able to take the puck and skate it in, right? So I'm able to gain possession there from the center ice faceoff. So pretty much any way to win a faceoff at center ice, um, straight back or the stick lift right, that acts the same as the same way as just winning it straight back. The puck goes back to the defense or the tie up whenever you take your winger in. Um, those like three types of plays, uh, you're able to gain possession most of the time. Um, so I figured that's a good way to start out with because this happens so much throughout a game. Uh, and the idea is to maintain possession the whole time, right? So uh, these are like the few things I do um, from the center ice face-off. Uh, I think that helps me throughout a game. This clip here is pretty much a basis for a lot of my neutral zone uh, puck movement. So I'm going to let this play and then go over some of what I'm looking at, right? So we see like the D to D pass just to reset here. Uh, opposing team kind of follows me to the other side of the ice, opens up the quick pass up the boards and then the quick touch to the middle, right? So going through that play again, um, I'm always doing like D to D passes in the neutral zone or my own zone. Um, and you can kind of see why here, right? So like originally whenever I had the puck and I, before I made the pass, there were two forwards, uh, from the other team on the left side. Once that pass is made, um, and I cut to the right a little bit, they follow me over to the right side, right? So that opens up once I reverse the ice and pass the puck back to the left side, that opens up all the lanes over there, right? So just making sure you can move the puck quickly enough touch it over to the middle. Um, you'll always have that puck support there, usually barring like any random like interference or something, right? So um, 
that's a lot of what I do, just reversing the, you know, resetting, reversing the ice, um, making those D to D passes in the neutral zone. Uh, this one's in my own zone, right? So uh, a lot of people, I think, whenever they play, um, especially in like D3 and below, uh, there's just a lot of like north and south movement or south north, I guess, however you want to say it. Um, there's not enough east to west movement. So whenever you see that, you know, it confuses the AI enough. You're able to get the puck up the ice easily enough. Um, so that's a lot of what I do. This clip here is kind of in the same vein of the last one. Um, you know, I'm pretty much outnumbered whenever I'm entering the zone here, right? Uh, but it's just having patience, waiting for the far side player to open up, right? So I make the pass. I don't have numbers, right? It's two on four, basically. And like I said, a lot of people get, or they feel the need to just rush into the offensive zone. Literally, if you just have a little bit of patience, things open up, right? So once again, head over to the right side. I bait the team into following me. Uh, one user controlled player, the rest AI. Um, once I get over there, I just cut back. That far side winger is open there for the easy zone entry. Thank God I cut the clip off at the end because I make a bad pass, but I think that's besides the point, right? So you see that just having patience, you know, east-west movement, uh, not north-south. Um, and I think this was another example, kind of like the last one, but this one, um, a little bit more congestion at the blue line um, and just showing that things eventually do open up if you do have patience. So running off that last clip uh, showing hitting the far side winger, um, whenever you do that throughout a game, uh, opponents should start to like, I don't know, get the tendency of it, but maybe start to play that a little bit more um, and be a little bit more conservative on your puck carrier. So this clip here, right, uh, simple two on two, and then people start to get back. Um, he's expecting the pass, so you notice like he's like sort of watching the middle there and going for pokes. Um, so I kind of just skate slowly and I'm able to get into the zone pretty easily, right? So let's go back here and look. Right there, right, I could maybe go to Eichel, but he's kind of trying to cover that because he's used to those middle passes or the far passes, um, me trying to get those through. So once you do that a few times, um, the easy, like literally just walk into the zone, right? Um, he's used to certain tendencies. Once you mix it up a little bit, other stuff starts to open up, right? So just look off the pass, kind of fake the pass, and then you can just walk in. So while it's great to be able to like enter the zone with passes, right? Or just being able to walk in, um, you do have to be able to do some maneuvers or some movement at the blue line uh, just to protect the puck yourself, right? So this move here, uh, so I have like a lefty uh, coming towards the middle, like on the right side, um, basically on your forehand side um, is one of my favorite moves. So cut to the middle. And then once you do that cut to the middle, um, L2 and A or L2 and X, I guess on PlayStation, uh, left trigger and A on Xbox. Um, do that pivot right there and it kind of opens up, right? So I'm gonna go back here and show you what I mean. So not making a pass cut to the middle. Once you cut to the middle, do that L2 movement um, and backpedal a little bit, right? It's a good way to gain the zone, um, fake to the middle. Usually players throw a poke check or something. Um, and it's a move I try to use a decent amount throughout the game um, just to throw off my opponents a little bit. And we'll show one more time. And this is something, if you go into practice mode or uh, you know even throughout a game, you can kind of practice the movement. Um, it's a pretty simple move to do, um, but it's very effective. Poke checks are something that people complain about a lot on NHL 22, because it's like kind of easy to do. Um, if you don't realize, whenever you press R1 or RB on Xbox to throw a poke check, there's like this auto aim um, and it goes where the puck is, right? So the only way to really counter it offensively is to continue to move your right stick here, right? So. Um, don't really have any passing options here. Um, so whenever you see me use the right stick there, um, I'm pressing right stick down to the left, uh, my forehand side, but I'm also moving my left stick in the same direction I'm protecting the puck too. Um, so you'll see me avoid a lot of pokes there. Um, this guy's kind of doing the same thing, unable to get any of them off on me. Um, and I think that's the best way to enter the zone with possession, um, especially somebody that throws a lot of pokes, right? So you see the right stick movement there trying to protect it where his stick can't go. Um, and also if he throws the poke check and I move the right stick, the poke's gonna lock on to where the puck was, not where it's going, right? So that's pretty much the best way to counter uh, some of the people that I guess spam poke. Um, I do think it's a little bit too effective. Um, I wish there was more manual aim involved in poking, but it's how the game is and you have to adjust, right? So seeing that again, um, and like I said, 
the main thing whenever you do move the right stick uh, protecting the puck move the left stick in the direction that you're also moving your right stick uh, it's something that a lot of people don't use or don't know i guess um, but it's something that i've done for the past few years and it seems to help uh, clips like this are kind of good because there's like a couple of things i want to show here uh, the first being the saucer pass up the boards um, the next being just the l2 movement here just to protect the puck to the outside right so starting off with the play again um, i utilize a lot of saucer passes up the boards um, right here specifically i could have held the puck to the boards and then sauced it up the boards the player I was playing playing against here uh, was pressuring to the outside a lot, and I had probably done some you know passes along the boards earlier in the game, so I cut to the middle here to do the pass. Once you do a saucer pass, it kind of messes with the AI a little bit on like that are defending. Um, so sometimes they'll do like an auto pinch, or sometimes they'll throw a poke, um, but it's easy to get some separation once you throw that. And then not only that, Ovechkin does like this ridiculous uh, puck pickup animation right to the inside. So sometimes there's some weird things that go along there. Um, so I'll let the play replay again and then go through the, I guess, the entry itself. So throughout a game, um, especially because I play my wingers on their offhands, if I don't have anything open towards the middle here, like right now I could, I could force a cross crease, I guess, if I keep skating, probably won't work. Um, so I like to do the L2 movement and protect to the outside kind of resets the play, gives me time, gives uh, my other players time to come into the zone, um, and then I can kind of assess what's going on, right? So once I do that, he's going behind me, he's covering the boards, so I can just cut back to the middle, right? So I have a couple options there, like obviously I make this pass here that goes in, but replaying the play again, get into the zone, L2 and X, right? Kind of just resets the play. Um, I use that a lot on my zone entries, especially whenever I have space on the boards. Um, and that's just a good way to establish possession in the offensive zone um, and without forcing a pass. This last clip, uh, you've probably seen it a lot if you played NHL 22 online. People love to shoot up the boards. Um, it is a good way to get the puck up and uh, it's pretty effective. So right here, right, if you're maybe if you're being pressured or maybe if you don't think a saucer pass is going to work, literally if you just flick up on the boards, you can get it to the person that's up above, right? So as we know, the line change mechanics in NHL literally since like the last, I don't know, 10 years, 15 years, they're awful. Um, I didn't call for a line change. The AI does this, right? But like if Eichel had stayed there, uh, it would have been a you know pass reception, but my guy comes out at the same time, so it doesn't matter, right? So literally just hold forehand, shoot up the boards. Easy way to move the puck up. Um, and it also, similar to the saucer pass, but it's actually like more effective. Whenever you shoot the puck up the boards, um, sometimes you get like lucky, like receptions to where it'll throw the AI off to. So um, I think this kind of encompasses a lot of what I wanted to go over on zone entries, breakout, puck possession. Um, you know, we went over the center ice face off, we went over possession, uh, you know, actually gaining entry with possession instead of passing over some of the uh, defensive zone and neutral zone passing. Um, but if you want, you know, you can watch, I have all my VOD saved on Twitch of my recent games, right? So a lot of this stuff is stuff I use every single game. Um, so if there's any suggestions or anything else you want me to go over, uh, feel free to add a comment. Um, but thank you for watching um, and have a good one.